We only want to hear your voice Hanging on every way Spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God Come now and breathe upon our heart Come now and have your way Spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God, come now and breathe upon our heart. Come now and have your way. When you speak, when you move, when you do only what you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we feel. When you come, Only what you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we feel. You're changing everything. Oh, you're changing everything. Changing everything. Because when you speak, when you move, when you do only what you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we feel. When you come, When you do only what you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, what we feel. It changes everything. Spirit, you're changing everything. Everything. We see the way we see it. You're changing everything. You're changing everything. You are informing our perspectives. You're informing our mindsets. You're changing everything. Changing everything. You're changing everything. So, how can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you fly when you don't know the way of the spirit? you walk when you don't know the way of the wind. The power at work in us changing everything in obedience to Christ. So how can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Changing everything in obedience to Christ. So he's the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God. And he's the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. And he's the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to who is bringing everything in obedience to God? He is the Holy Ghost. He is the Holy Ghost, the 
Spirit of the living, Spirit of the living God is the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. Oh, He's the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come, who is bringing out the thing in obedience to bring it everything bring it everything hey he is changing everything changing marabo shana kaya rabo sala ya rabo ta oh he is changing everything makate brodo sana na de he adado shana ha ha he is changing everything changing everything Renewing everything. Makada bo santala baba haya gada brodo shataya. He is remolding everything. He is remolding everything. He is changing everything. He's refining everything. Hey, he's defining everything. He's changing everything. Cause you're the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Living God. You are the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. You are the Holy Ghost, you're the seal of the edge. You are bringing everything in obedience. Swallow your pride tonight. Get up to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands is the keys to eternal life. Until the day will turn, he's at work in us, bringing everything. He don't need us. He's at work in us, bringing everything. Because I broke it all, I had a bush at all. Oh, you're at work in us, bringing everything. In obedience to Christ. 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 We are aligning in obedience to Christ. In obedience to Christ, in obedience to Christ, in obedience to Christ. That's a pakala ya gada boshantaya. Can you just pray the Spirit tonight? Can you just pray the Spirit tonight? Mane kande bara la boshata pale ende ke de bosha na mahaya. Renda ke tapo la breke te poto shana mana ante kaya gada bosha la. Rende ke de ke de bo se prekata pronde pala na ya na bo do sha ne ko na na bo samba eta pala prekata po do sha tapaya rade ka na bakunda la prekata tu se eta pro ko do sha mene ke de brende ke de be do bo do sha taya na ba la prekata tu pra ate patasi pala de handa kando re de bo sha ne ka ya ka na bo sha na na ba do sha la bahaya rade ko sa tapaya ka na ba do sha.
Kazibrula na bahaya gadabosha na Bring in everything in obedience to Christ. Bring in everything in obedience to Christ. Our thoughts, our decisions, our motives, our actions, our emotions, everything, everything, everything. It's bringing everything, everything in obedience to Christ. Hey, hey, hey. In obedience to Christ. The spirit of the sovereign God. The spirit of life. The spirit of truth. Come take your place. Spirit come. The spirit of the living God. The spirit of life, the spirit of truth. Come take your place, spirit come. So Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place. Take your place. Holy Take your place. Oh, 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place in my heart. Take your place in my soul. Take your place in my life. Take your place in my thought. Take your place. Hey, Holy Ghost, say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, take your place. 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 Take your throne. Take your throne. Take your throne. Take your throne. Sit on 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 your throne. In my heart. Sit on your throne. In my life. Sit on your throne. In my life. Sit on your throne. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Your place of rulership. Your place of lordship. Take your place. Take your place.
Zedabakata Brutandili Gedebo Shatapala Redigada Brahan Likoso Pala Etapa Kuta Prana Ningada Brakadaya Gadabo Shatala Bahara Bra we have thrown you, we have thrown you, Lord Most High. 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 We have thrown you, we have thrown you. We call you King of Kings. Come and be the king over everything that has a kingdom. In our thoughts, in our perceptions, in our hearts, in our emotions. Every kingdom we may have built. Come and rule. Come and rule over it, O Lord. Take your place. Take your place. Over all principalities, over all powers over everything that lifts up itself against the knowledge of the Lord. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place in our lives. To the spirit of the living God, the spirit of life, the spirit of truth. Come take your place. Spirit come. The spirit of the living God. The spirit of life. The spirit of truth. Come take your place. Spirit come. Spirit come. Spirit come, Spirit come, Spirit come, Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit come in this place, Holy Spirit come. Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Azubra la bakanda kaya la la bosha na man haya la bosh. Zebro la bakunta eta pola bra ate katora na bahashi katile. Rende ke de bosho ne kana bahasha na na ande lege de bosh. Made pruta 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 le pola breke te prusa pra ande kala ega na bosh. Rande kata kata la yada bosha na yada. Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, fill this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, come. Get a motion and a day. Come, fill this atmosphere, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, come. To saturate this atmosphere, oh Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Keda bakola prate, rente ke te poso pakaya gada ashi pala prate, mone kate pola prate poko sana mana ataya da banana. Rade, 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 Kota, Aliba, Elibo, Shale, Elipato, Sapala. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit.
Lord, I surrender to your glory. So, Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Flow like a river. Flow like a river in this place. Flow like a river. Flow like a river in this place. Flow like a river. Flow like a river in this place. Flow like a river. Flow like a river in this place. Flow like a river. Flow like a river in this place. Flow like a river. Flow like a river in this place. Flow like a river. Flow like a river. Spirit, come. Spirit. Makandena do baliaba, e makandena ne ne mo shubamba, i ana matu elambe ado, e anu e mano mana maki ado, i ala pandera do shkala, e re mo tu e na na mandere de boska, je bam 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 tu e na na shkale, ano manu a pande ado shkale. Oh, I am. And I'm a man in the name of Shka. I am a man of God. And I'm a man of God. 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 Come and pray with me. We are praying. Ale kandosh kahande gado paya. E maru apande na dosh kahale gadia. Mos katan le na dosh kahale. Baza do bandi atan le kato paya. Rupanda da 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 bash kanda na makande ado tiata. Come and stir up your spirit in this place. Kale mano panda. Jege dege botu atan le na no taya. Le badu as kata le gado sh kahana ma mesge de botu. Tania, ora bamba bamba bamba, tali da dua tali ada, rekapania kamba da 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 ba shande, mopania tali ada da 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 ba shantali ya, rokande gadosh katali ala la ba shande ya, moramba bamba 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 shande ya na na ma shande, until you can feel the endless possibilities of your spirit. Ma kande gadosh katali anda, re bamba 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 tali ya na 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 ma shande, rakapanu banda danti ya tali. Mare bandos kata lega da shika pande gadota la bandu e na na masante kato sita le manu e pan pan lega dosh kata re kampani ana na masanta liana ora bamba 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 shande gadosh kaha ma bande na des kata liga bante come on we are praying na ne balo bamba jege ne mono tu a pan na na ta le na no pa jeka pan li ala la la until your spirit breaks loose mara bega talan nigaba na masante 
Tale, Ere Matale, Abatale, Iga Baga 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 Metalana Namas Cantela Dosha, Zega Baba 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 Zubanda Gash Catale, Robamba Baba 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 Tale La Dopaya, Joko Bege 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 Botus Catalia, Rapan Legados Catalia, Menene Mopanana Namasu Pantale Gadiata, Rakam Bega Dos Catanega No Paya, Ila Tamba Baba Matela de Atari, Rakandega, 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 Ikapala Nana Masham, Baba Baba Baba, come and exercise your spirit, Mara, Ikapa, 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 Repa, Papa, Palena, Roshka, Zebo, Dodo, Dobo, Supantalia, Nakandega, Jege, Dege, 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 Bopane, and Amatalia, Rabana, Matuele, Lebo, Fuamba, Baba, Baba, Taliada, Rabababea. I welcome you to Eden this evening. But I do not welcome you to a program or a gathering um, this evening. I am welcome you, welcoming you into the presence of God. I am welcome you, welcoming you into the place where the Bible says that they were both naked and they were not ashamed. I'm welcoming you into the place of vulnerability. I am welcoming you into the place of purity and pureness. I'm welcoming you into the place where no fear exists. I am welcoming you into the place where your father sits and rules. I am welcoming you into the very presence of the Most High. I am welcoming you into the place where he calls the garden of God. I am calling you to a place where the Lord has made for himself and has prepared even for you. I am calling you into a place of fellowship with him. I am calling you into a place of truth and sincerity with your God. I am calling you into a place where there is no hindrance, there is no separation between you and your God. I am calling you into a place where you can meet with God and you can see God face to face. I am calling you into an atmosphere of his spirit. Whatever you will say to him, say, him, say to him from the presence, um, uh, from the pureness of your mind. Whatever you will say to him, let it not be that another orchestrated this. You know, let it be that it is coming from the outflow of your spirit. Let it be that it is a place where you realize that in this place there is no judgment and there is no condemnation. It is before the king that you are sitting before. The Bible says that even in those times he will come in the cool of the evening. The Lord was seeking for a man. He was searching for Adam. He will come at different times of the day just to fellowship with Adam. Just to hear how Adam thinks. Just to understand how he is coming into the place where the Lord will have him come into. I welcome you into Eden. I welcome you into the place of his dwelling. I welcome you into the richness of his, of his presence, into the richness of all of creation. Where all things are beautiful. Father, we swap our reality for this one right now. We say let this atmosphere be translated into that of Eden right now. I don't care if you've not been able to pray in the past days. I don't care if, you know, you've been struggling with your spirit. There is a moment and there is a time when the Lord seeks to meet with his people. And I declare it that it is in this time right now. I proclaim it in this place that it is that time in the name of Jesus. Let my spirit yield, oh God. Let everything within me yield. Let my body yield, oh God. Let my soul yield to this presence. Even though the Bible says that in this place they were naked and not ashamed, there was a time when the Bible says that the Lord came in the cool of the evening. And the Bible says that they realized that they were naked and then they ran. Father, that's not what we are looking at this evening. But that if you will give us, give us your presence, oh God. We will lay it all before you. That if you will honor us, oh Father, and you will give us such an audience, so much so that the heavens will begin to proclaim, who is she that she, you are mindful of her? Who is, who is he that you are mindful of him? Baba. There are moments in time. 
this is one of them. Ha ba 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 shaya. Era ba dua satalia. This is what the Lord says concerning your time in Zion. It says in Isaiah 51 verse 3, it says, Indeed, the Lord will comfort Zion. He says, He will comfort all our waste places. He says, Our wilderness He will make like the Garden of Eden. He says, And her desert like the Garden of the Lord. He says, Joy and gladness will be found in her, and thanksgiving and sounds of melody. When He comes to meet with us, He takes away, He transforms, He gives that which is ugly, he gives, or rather, he exchanges that which is beautiful for that which is ugly. He brings order for that, for, for, for when there is disorder and chaos. He comes to beautify. Father, we receive you this evening. We receive the weightiness of your presence. We receive the gift of your presence. Baba, we pray for ourselves in this place. And we ask, oh God, if there be anything within us that will not allow us, oh God, to enjoy your presence, even for the days that are coming, even for the days that are ahead, if there be anything within us that will not allow us to enjoy, Father, these things that you have promised us according to Isaiah 51, Father, we ask, oh God, that you will take them and you will convert them. We pray, Father, that you will help us to be able to receive the joy that you give, the comfort that you give, the, 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 the ability to give thanks by reason of all that we have received from you. Father, we pray, oh God, that there will be a translation of mind. There will be a transformation of spirit in this place, oh God, until we have come into that state you have promised us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Good evening, Auntie Kevin. How was your day? The place is hot. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, neither your answers provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning. No mercies I see. All I have needed, your hands has provided. Great is 
is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, so, good evening, everybody. Good evening once again. There's something um, I want to touch on this evening, right? And it's so funny that before some of you stepped in, Kome was here and Jude was here and I think Kachi, and we started having a conversation about something completely different and random about, you know, her day to day. And, you know, I started touching and I started saying some things and I realized, oh, this were, you know, part of the things that the Lord had been, you know, saying to me or, you know, musing. Um, within my spirit and what it is is it's what the Lord said to me is learning about the beginning or learning about new beginnings you know and when I say new beginnings I don't mean in terms of like starting something new um, I'm going to actually take a look at scripture or we are going to take a look at scripture to see what that beginning what beginning I'm talking about in particular so I was in a place where I was, I've, I've been on a on prayer project, basically, where I take a certain issue and I pray over it on a daily basis. Like, I have my alarm clock to remind me to pray. You know, this app I use, I would recommend it anytime, any day. It's called Echo. E-C-H-O-M-H-O. It's called Echo. So, it tells you, so you put in your prayer and then it reminds you of the times when you ought to pray. So, you can list them out. And then if the prayer has been answered, you can also tick that your prayer has been answered and then it will archive it for you. Very simple app. Very simple to use. So, I had been on this prayer project for months now. So, I recently entered a new one. And basically, what happens in those times is I have a conversation with God. to say, okay, God, I want to address this thing in my life. How would you... Um, how would you have me, you know, it's like a strategy session with God and I'm asking him, how would you have me approach this matter? Because I don't just believe in praying like scattered bullet prayers. I believe, okay, you know, the way you go to warfare and you sit down to calculate the cost of your, basically just develop strategies around your world, know what you have, know what your enemy has and all of that. So I have that conversation with God and I always, um, um, put it around or subject my prayer to that strategy that he gives me. Sometimes it's even a word that is coming from, you know, my pastor and all of that. So, but I take it all in and I, you know, put that into my um, prayer. So I remember asking the Lord for this particular thing and saying, oh, how do I approach this matter? And the thing he said to me was, go to the root of it, go to the beginning of it. So I was in that place where I was searching. This was a completely different, in fact, it has nothing to do with what I was going to say. It's just the strategy of things, of, of it itself that I want to touch on. So um, the, the Lord said to me, go to the root of it. So I began to like search scriptures for, you know, things that were in relation to what I was praying or what I wanted to pray about. This is still very much ongoing. And it was as though when I did that, the Lord led me to certain verses that had to do with beginnings. And then I, he gave me a perspective about what beginnings represented and how I can use them, you know, to my own benefit. And how I can understand them even in terms of like knowing what to do for my prayers. And one of the scripture he gave me, one of the very first scripture he gave me was in the book of Jude 1 verse 6. If you're familiar with this, please we come with our Bibles because I actually put it up that come with your Bibles. You know, come with your Bible so that you can mark, you can, you know, and all of that. Anyway, so Jude 1, 6 and KJV, it says, um, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in um, everlasting chains under darkness unto the, unto the judgment of the great day. Now, this is talking about the fallen angels, you know, and how all of that they rebelled. I'm not going to go into the story itself, but I want to pick out um, two words from that scripture. And it says, um, so basically saying that they were kept in everlasting chain, they were, they were basically punished. And the reason for their punishment was clearly stated. It said because they kept not their first estate. So the word there I'm looking at is kept and their first estate. So um, kept there, um, basically, in the times where it was used in scripture, it talks about observing. Observing or um, or doing. So you know how maybe they would give them the laws in the old time. So when the, you know when the Bible talks about talk about um, observing to do the laws of God, 
that's the same word. It means, but here, but also it means like to to guard a thing. So to guard a thing, protect it basically, um, to attend carefully uh, or take care of a thing. It says um, um, to also reserve. So that's the word kept, right? Then the second one is, again, they did not keep their first estate. So that word estate, another word for it, or there are many other words for it. Some will say they did not keep their authority. You know, they abandoned their authority, authority basically. But one of the words for it is also beginning. They did not keep their beginning. So I began to ask the Lord and I said, what does that even mean? How, how do you put that in a sentence and it makes sense? And you say, oh, they did not keep their beginning. Anyways, I checked the meaning of that first of all. And it has um, everything to do with um, origin. So they did not keep their orig origin. Um, it says the person or thing that commences, the first person or thing in a series, the leader, the first fruit, the chief. It says um, that's... It says that by which anything begins to be, the origin, the active cause. It says the first place, principality, rule, majesty. So it speaks of, you know, the first of many. It speaks of a source. It, it speaks of an origin, the very first of a thing. So they did not keep um, that. So basically what that verse is saying was that they did not keep their source, they did not keep their beginning, or in a layman term, they did not keep their blueprint the blueprint that was given to them or the templates that was given to them so basically you know you've been it's like you assigning someone to a job or appointing someone to a thing and you say this is you know how you give people their jd and all of that and you say this is the frame upon which you're to work and then at that at some point in time they, be, they begin to deviate from that that's what the bible says that they did and that's why they are in um Eternal gloom, basically, right now in chains. Um, so that failure, basically, that failure to keep or to maintain that order is what introduces chaos and anarchy, you know, in that situation. And I believe this to be true for almost anything we do in life. So what, 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 what that scripture is basically telling me is that um, God gives a pattern and he gives a set way. The minute you start to deviate from it, what begins to say, what, by implication, what happens is disorder comes into that thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, it is not whether it is your will for it to be or not to be. It doesn't matter. The minute you start to deviate from that pattern, what happens is it begins to implode on itself. And I'll give you another um, scripture that backs this up. The Bible says, I think it was in the book of Mat Matthew. Um, please help me check Matthew 19. Verse 1, what was the very first verse? What does it say? Okay, let me read because I have the microphone, please. Yes, I just wanted to confirm that that's it. So it says that when Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Verse 2, large crowds followed him and he healed them there. Then verse 3, it says, some Pharisees came to him to test him, and they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Verse 4, he said, haven't you read, he replied, that in the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, um, what God has joined together, let no man, se let no one separate. Verse seven, he says, when then they ask, did Moses command that a man give his, sorry, he says, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. He says, but it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that. Anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, commits adultery. So they come with a question and they say, oh, you know, it was based on the basis of marriage and separation and divorce and all of that. And Jesus basically, in answering them, goes back to the beginning. The very first time he says, did you not 
you know, to the very source. It says, don't you remember that they were made, you know, male and female. And for this purpose, they were, you know, called to be joined to each other. They became one flesh, let no man separate, and all of that. And then they still came back with a follow-up question saying that, you know, but Moses said that we can't put away our wives. We can't divorce our wives. There's a place for this. And Jesus tells them and says, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses gave in to you. But guess what? What you have believed, you know, since is actually not so. You've been in error all this while. Your thought process has been in, or, or, um, in error all this while because you did not know the beginning. So what that tells me is that for every issue, even if it's marriage and even if it's, you know, finance or whatever the case may be, your spirituality, there is a source and there is a beginning. The Bible says the very first, in fact, the very first scripture, word in the scripture is the beginning. It is the same root word. It says that in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. In that statement is the fullness of all of creation. Because what then happens is that God begins to draw a map of how, first of all, heaven ought to be and then earth has to be. There is a pattern or a template that he sets in that moment to say this is how the order of things are. And then that map is being drawn from Genesis 1 verse 1, and it is in completion in Genesis 1, verse 31. Because at that point in time, he finishes what he is doing, and he says to man, I have finished all of this, and everything I give to you. So for everything in life, there has to be a source. So here, here is the reason why this conversation started. Remember I said I was on a prayer project, and I needed to pray about certain things, and the Lord kept on talking at me to say, go back to the beginning of this thing. Don't start here, because you will not understand the fullness of what you're trying to do. Even though you're trying to walk forward, you need to understand that there is a journey behind you. There is a reason why I say the things that I say, and unless you fully grasp it, you will, not under you will think I am just sending you on an errand. You will think, oh, you know, the Lord said it, let me just, no, that's not it. I need you to come to the full understanding of things. And Jesus was trying to tell those men the same thing. Yes, you've believed these things, you've believed all your life. You understand that, okay, yes, Moses said, and all of that. He's not dragging that with you. Yes, Moses said. But at the end of the day, have you gone back for yourself to check and to see, you know, what the Lord is saying about um, this thing? So I know that from the time of creation, this standard has been set. Um by God. It is from here all of heaven and earth will draw their source from. And the minute they begin to deviate against or away from that pattern, everything will begin to implode on itself. Take a look at our society today. People, you know, even if you bring up a conservative idea, something as simple as men marry women and stop at, you know, that point, they will tell you, oh, you're old school, you're this, your dad. And it's like they are waking up every day, and there are numerous issues, not just this one, waking up every day to make sure that they challenge that blueprint. And then you find out that Christians or you know people who are supposed to be defending this blueprint don't necessarily themselves know what is there. So by the time this argument is laid before us, we are dilly dallying and going back and forth, not knowing where to stand because we feel, oh, this matter is too intricate or this matter is this and this. I understand not everything is black and white, but there is always somewhere to fall back to, you know. So many times when this argument is laid and then you know all of these things are said, you realize that. We don't have a place to stand or we don't even have something to fall back on. And so what then happens is that, again, like I said, chaos begins. Praise God. Anyways, so talking about that blueprint also. Again, the, uh, God made the heavens and the earth. The heavens first, they were made from the, the same energy, the same source. But heaven came first and then earth um, follows suit afterwards. And the Bible even talks about how, you know, let it be on the earth as it is in the heavens. And I'm so glad we did that, you know, session that day of what is in heaven, trying to find. So that was also a way of trying to find out what the blueprint of heaven looks like. And you realize that it costs across everything we do. It doesn't matter if it's business, if it's marriage, if it's friendship, if it is life, there is a pattern. Praise God. Anyways, uh, uh, 
Um, so, one second. So I said that the accumulation of that whole scenario in Genesis one was, um, or the end of it was twenty. It was actually twenty eight to thirty one, and I'm going to read it out. And it says, "God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and over every living creature, creature that moves on the ground." Verse twenty nine. And it's, and then God said, "I give you every seed bearing plant in the face of the whole earth, and every um, tree that has fruit within." With seed in it, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give. Ev it says, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw that all he had made, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning. The, um, and, the, and morning, the sixth day. It says, as, um, so, okay, so that, that was the end of it. So the accumulation of that scripture was, God made this blueprint and basically hands this over to man and says, see, now it's, it is within your hand. You know, it is left for you to execute, execute all that I have said. And there's a scripture that I love so much, and it is in Psalms 127. To back this up, it says that, that's verse 1 and 2. It says that, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For it gives, it says, for he giveth belo his beloved sleep. What it means is that, it says, except the Lord builds a house and watches over a city. Those that do it, waste of time. It says, even though you will seem like you have a semblance of productivity, what it means to, um, it says you will, for in vain you will rise up early, you know, and you will sit up uh, late and eat the bread or so. It says basically, even if you have what seems like productivity to men and all of that, you will never have a sense of fulfillment as to what you are doing unless I am backing you up. So you will build though. After all, you're even eating bread to begin with. Whether it's the bread of sorrow or it's the bread of joy, that's your business. You are sure eating. To the ordinary eye, it looks like you're actually prospering. It says, but as long as you don't do it according to the eternal plan of God, it says you are doing it in vain. And it means that every energy you expend, every sacrifice you make, it is unto nothing. In fact, that word vain, it means that the, the other, if you check the root meaning, it actually means you will do it unto depression. It says you will do it and you will never gain satisfaction from it. You will never feel like you are contributing to something bigger than yourself. That's what it means. So unless the Lord is handing you the blueprint for that thing, you're wasting your time. Even though it seems like you are exerting yourself, even though it seems like all the energy. So now, don't look at it as the big things. Look at it as even the little things in your life. Is it the way you run your business? What's the blueprint of God for that? And don't tell me that he does, you don't know because he gives it. Has he given you a picture of what that business is, or, um, ought to look like? You know, for those of you that have families and those of you that have children, what is the blueprint for family and for raising your children? What has the Lord, you know, spoken to you prophetically concerning that child? Any endeavor that you take, it doesn't matter. That it has been given. And the minute you walk away from it, remember what I said, anarchy, chaos begins to enter. So you don't have any, and your ignorance is not an excuse to the, for those things, whether they come or they don't come. Yes, you don't know. Yes, you know. It is going to come if you walk away, um, if you walk away from it. So my challenge to you is the same challenge Jesus had, you know, towards those men when he said, don't you know? Haven't you read? Haven't you done your research? Have you not asked the Lord concerning this thing? What is he saying? How can you come and be asking me a question? And then there was something I realized about that scripture that, you know, blew my mind away. So in the beginning, it was not so that you could divorce your wife, basically. So if it was given like that, at what point did that introduction come in to say, or rather, how do I put it? So from the time, it was okay. And then not only that, imagine Jesus was saying that. In fact, they were the ones that now came. But from Moses' time, on, think about the, the years that how many generations from Moses till that point in time where Jesus stood with those men, men upon men upon men, believing that this is the standard of truth. So we ought to be careful. Because saying it's okay at that point in time, 
because of the hardness of their heart. Again, let's just, let's just. And saying let's just, how many generations believe that? It was okay. So by the time Jesus was coming to say what was from the beginning, it felt like he was challenging the status quo. But that's not the status quo. That's a deception from hell. So that's the problem. I was talking to, it was also came out, I was talking to this evening, and I said, even in our generation, we need to be careful. Because what Satan comes to do most times is to deceive. He, he's, like, really would you get people telling you that, okay, he came in his true self, you know, he was terrifying, or whatever the case may be. Most times, I found that what he does, and which is his, an old trick, he does it by the book. That's, you have to give him that. He does things by the book. Tell you, what is deception actually? How do, what do you define deception as? What did you say? The distorted truth. What did you say? A lie. But it doesn't stop there. Deception doesn't stop at a lie. Because a lie is implying that I know that it is a lie. So a deception is lies that I believe is truth. Has truth. And the Con, um, the conclusion of that matter is, I believe it as the truth. So I was like, okay, it's just like you wearing those orange, you know, the scarf and all of that. And I'm telling you that it is green. And you're saying, but no, it is orange. And then it's like, as I'm say, telling you that it is green, somebody else, maybe call me and say, come, it's coming. All of them were saying that it is, gre- it is green. There is a way you will be bombarded, bombarded, bombarded with that word, green you will begin to question your own reality as to whether this thing is truly green or it is orange or you're just going crazy. Imagine that happening for generation upon generation upon generation. At a point, you will get to believe it. And I also feel so strongly that that's what's happening in our time. There's so many issues that people call controversial. Meanwhile, the Bible has a stance on it. But if you start saying, they'll say, oh, but the times have changed. No, the times hasn't changed. It will always, if it's about the changing of times, it will always change. But the word of the Lord is sure. There is no dilly-dallying with him. It is whether you know it or not. And then after you know it, do you believe it? Because I was telling her, I said, think about Eve. Do you believe that Eve, in the time when she was eating that fruit, or whatever the case may be, she thought to herself, I am going to defy God, I'm going to disobey God. It doesn't seem like it. It never felt like this woman set out to, you know, to disobey God. In fact, what Satan told her was that if you eat this fruit, you will become like God. How, there is, I have no argument against that because if you tell me that I will become like the person I love most in the world and I've been aspiring to be, what are we talking about? So in her head, this was the revelation of, like, there is nothing greater you could have offered Eve. It was not even the subject of the fruit, but that the product of it was that she was going to resemble God even more. So all he had to do was tell her, you know, the truth, and then insert some lies in it. Do it in such a way whereby, like, he demystifies anything that has, they just, just throw away anything serious. Just, you know, throw it in there and let her, in her own comfort, believe that this is what she's doing. If not, if she felt like she had done something exceedingly, exceedingly wrong, why would she go to Adam to say, come and eat? I have Judas. And like she literally waited for the guy, prepared herself and said, come and eat of this thing I have eaten. Does that feel like somebody who set out to disobey God or to destroy her husband? Of course it doesn't feel like, because in her heart she believed it. And that's the trick of the enemy. Again, man has jurisdiction upon the earth. So anything you believe goes. It's a simple fact. Anything you decide goes. So why is he dragging it with you? He's not going to do that. Implant it in your spirit and your heart to do, you know, rebel against God in a manner that you don't think is actually rebellion. Have you, have you not wondered why every, every, like if I ever had to repent for a thing or when I'm repenting for a thing, I'll be telling God, I say, God, see, I know I'm repenting, no, but I truly did not know. I never felt for a moment that I was doing a disservice to you or to your kingdom. I said in that moment, it was because truth was not revealed within me. So even when I'm begging God and I'm telling you, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm truly repenting for a thing, I'm letting him know that, see, and like, I didn't do this to hurt you. Does that make sense? It was because the difference was that I did not know truth. 
I just could not tell the difference between a lie and the truth. So he was deceived and all of that saga happened. So I'm saying all of this to say, the Lord said, go back to the beginning. And what that facilitated wasn't even prayer. Remember, I started to, I said I wanted to pray, fast and pray for that matter. So what then happened was not that I began to pray. I began to study. So I went on a search. You know, I was checking every word. I was trying to understand scenarios. I was trying to understand this concept and the mind of God when he's proclaiming a thing or he's saying a thing concerning just one matter. So now I know that what the Lord also was trying to take away from me was deception. So that I can have a clear field or a foundation that is not um, stained, you know. So I have something to work with when I am praying and when I'm building myself up in that thing. And I feel like that's where everybody ought to be. He's always taking us back to the beginning. So I started going back. I was studying for... Um, it's been a week plus now, I think. One word, just one word. Oh. I was looking for just one word in scripture. Anything that had a semblance of it, I was breaking it down, trying to because I needed to come to the fullness of rev- of that of the revelation of truth concerning that matter. I needed to know the stance of God so that when I am talking about what I wanted, it will be in line with what the Lord wanted for me also and what He had in mind in the day when He spoke those words. So I didn't just go about praying to say, God, give me this. God, give me that. I went and I started searching for the beginning. So that, again, I, I am not, not only not doing um, scatter bullet prayers. I am not giving the enemy room to enter anywhere. I am not giving ignorance. To, I'm, not, I'm not allowing ignorance come into, you know, that conversation. So that I will not have a moment when I'm telling the Lord I did not know. Okay, now I know. So that's what that blueprint um, did for me in that time. So again, talking about that generation and the lies, we owe it to our generation and to the generation afterwards to not only know the truth, stand for the truth, and utilize the truth. Because what happens is, unless there is someone who is willing to be called an outcast, you know, stands up and say, this is not the way it is. Until that person is willing, you will have people falling by their numbers because of one, um, one lie, one deception, you know. So the summation of all of this is that what the Lord, I found the Lord pointing out to me is we have to go back to the word. We have to go back to the culture of not just reading Bible, but of studying the scripture, of dissecting and knowing it for ourselves. It is not a matter. Oh, you want to say something? Okay, sorry. Sorry. You go. No, no. So before we leave the issue of deception, there was a word that dropped in my spirit. And the word kept, you know, when you were talking about Eve being deceived, it was the word beguile. Beguile. And, you know, you just kept, you know, she was beguiled. She was beguiled. So it says to charm or enchant someone in a deceptive way. So, when, you know, when you were giving the example of the way we are now, we, lots of people are now, it's, it's almost like an enchantment. Like people have been, um, how do I say it? People's senses have been, be, you know, is beclouded. So that, the, the, you know, you find somebody doing something that is wrong and the person looks to be the one doing the right thing. You that you're saying, and this thing you're doing is wrong. Your voice is now in the minority. So it's, it's you know, and, and, and it's an enchantment because you're wondering, can't you see? What is happening here? You know, so that, that word just dropped, you know, and, and I just wanted to share. Thank you. Know, that it was Absolutely, I agree. That I feel honestly like there's a heavy cloud that is... And the only thing that truly can combat this thing is truth. Truth against deception. You know, but the thing is also, are people courageous enough? You know, are people, because 
in this age and time, it will cost you, whether you like it or not, you know. But if there's enough, you know, voices standing up for that which is supposed to be as the Lord said it should be, then just maybe, just maybe we have a fighting chance. Just maybe we will not. Because even I, like, I fear for, I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself, this is my generation. What about the one that is to come? Where do they even start off? So, again, the onus is on us to know what the Lord says concerning every matter. There's a scripture I saw that um, blessed me. I saw it today. It says in Philippians 2, 14 to 16, it says, do everything without um, grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. It says, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. So when I saw that, I was like, this is all I am trying to say. And you know the funny thing? There has been no... Every generation always had something they had to stand up against. Every generation always had like a deception they had to, you know, stand against or speak against and all of that. So there is always that, you know, fighting stance that we are taking at every point in time. But it says that after you have taken that stance and you're shining like the, like the stars in the sky, it says, hold firmly to the word of life. But how can you hold on to something you don't even have to begin with? So your fighting chances are even dwindling the more you don't have a reserve of the word. It's basically what the Lord is saying. Remember, again, talking about the beginning, the Bible says in John 1, 1, it says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So we're talking about going back to new beginnings. So the newness of, or the beginning doesn't even speak of newness. It actually speaks of that which is old. It speaks of ancient landmarks. It speaks of, you know, the details and the edicts of God from, you know, the time of creation. So you don't go into a system. You don't go into a thing thinking, oh, I'll just live my life. I'll just, no, that's not what you're sent to do. That's not what you've been sent to do. So that said, you know, I want us to actually take a minute to pray. Um, pray for the world. Pray for the church. Pray for the all of the earth, uh, the all of the earth right now. And just ask that, in the same way Jesus serves, served like an injunction to that generation, speaking to them the words of life and taking them back to what was the original plan, um, you know, of God for them, that there will be such an injunction of the Holy Spirit in the heart of men again, so that we can even have a, a ground to have discourses that are sane, you know, so that we even have a place where we can come together and say, okay, what is the Lord saying? What is he saying? I remember that scripture, I think, um, in the book of, I think it was Second Kings, I can't remember, 22. It was um, Josiah, the young king. He, they said he ruled from um, the age of eight, and then he was, the Bible talks about how he, he ruled like his father David. He did not turn from right to left. And then at a point, he, I think he dispersed money to the people who were maintaining the temples. And then they said as they did all of that, they discovered um, a script or a manuscript from before. And then they said, um, basically, it was the judgment of God against Israel, and all of them were living just fine. And things were going. And the minute Josiah saw that, the Bible says that he repented and he, you know, he thaw his clothes. And then he, he thought, um, he, 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 he called the people and said, go and look for, you know, the prophets. I think it was a, a prophetess who interpreted it and said, this is the judgment of God concerning Israel. And the Bible says that what then happened, apparently, they were actually going to walk into peril, into the anger of God. And none of them had a clue. Again, the reason why I mentioned this was because it was because somebody discovered the books according to how the Lord has set the times to be, and they began to repent. And the Bible now says that God, you know, had mercy in a sense because he told um, the king that he would gather his bones, he would die, you know, none of this will come into his household. But the minute he died, they were taken. So all of that, the, the Bible actually says that the Lord did not repent of his anger against them despite. But Josiah, because he repented in the moment he discovered it, the Bible says that his hand was stayed. Even here. <laughs> you know, so that's where the prayer is going to come from. You know, that, that, that manner of, in, that, that, that level of injunction in our world. Because we are, in, we are in safety in our Christianity and all of that, but we still have to interact with the world. The world is, is for our taking. Does that make sense? 
So it is not it's not it's not a race of seclusion. We have in fact it's even us that would include will be the ones that are inclusive. You know, so let's just pray that the spirit of the Lord will bring an injunction in this time. It will be like in the days of, you know, this man who asked the Lord, who asked Jesus about the, 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 the matter of marriage and the matter of divorces. And he brought the counsel of God according to that which has been written. I pray that the spirit of God in this time will come, will come like a mighty force into our society, into our churches, into our nations, into Nigeria in particular into the world and he will bring his truth. He will bring the word that was with him from before, the word that is with him now and the word that is the very embodiment of his life. Father, we pray, oh God, that there will be a revelation of truth like never been known before. God, we just begin to break every hold of deception in our generation in the name of Jesus. We pray that the spirit of God will come to reveal truth in our hearts, truth in our systems, truth in all that we do, in our families, in our businesses, in the name of Jesus. We pray that the hand of the Lord will be stayed up, will be stayed on us in this season, even as we usher in the season of beginnings in the name of Jesus. We say let it be like in the days when the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Let it be like in the days when he will come upon the face of the earth and he will look and he will say that all that he had made is good. We pray that in the name of Jesus, that there will be a, a, a time of refreshing and a time of translation. Remember when we were praying about Eden and we said that this is the place where the Lord comes to turn the desert places into the places of comfort. Father, we pray for a rebuilding because we understand and we know that the Bible says that unless the Lord builds a house, unless the Lord watches over a city, we do it failing ourselves, failing our systems, failing our society. So we pray. Mare it is a lofty idea to pray for the world, but because we understand that you have given us the earth to dominate, we understand that you have given us the earth as an inheritance. And so our words, they come forth as sounds that are going forth, that are going forth to enact the will of God upon the face of the earth. We even pray for ourselves because it is one thing to pray for order in all that surrounds you when within you there is disorder. Father, we align ourselves with you today, O oh God. We align our spirit, man. We align our souls, we will align our bodies today and we say let everything under us, let everything in us be subject to the name and the authority of God. Let it not be said of us that we even left our first estate because it is when we have taken care and we have observed our own estate. Only then can we speak of the estate of others. Only then can we speak of the authority of others. And so, Father, we just pray that in this season, let's just begin to pray for the spirit of boldness over the house of God, over the church, and over the people of God. My God and my King, that we will not be silenced in this time, but the spirit of boldness will come upon us, just like in the days of King Josiah. That, Father, it will not be a matter of age. It will not be a matter of experience, but it will be a matter of the spirit of God that encompasses us and that leads us into all truth oh God God we just pray in the season come on we are praying in the name of Jesus come on we are praying in the name of Jesus come on we are praying in the name of Jesus oh we pray for the revelation of your truth oh God Father we just bless every one of us today you will give us the life of your spirit once again. You will give us the grace to go before your word and to enjoy your word. You will give us the grace to be able to stay with your word and to take of it the life that it brings. We give, you will give us the grace in this season to be studious with our study of your word. You will give us the ability to be able to receive truth from your word in this season. We pray, Father, that you will give us the sweetness of your word. You would help us, oh God, in this season, oh God, to stay with your word. We pray, Father, that you will give us strength. For those of us that are saying we don't have time, we can't do, God will give you wisdom in this time in the name of Jesus. And that every time you open up those words of life. There will be realms upon realms that will be open unto you. There will be truth upon truth that will be open unto you. There will be wisdom upon wisdom that will be open unto you. Knowledge upon knowledge that will be open unto you. The depth of, of, of the knowledge of God that will be open up to you in this season. Father, we thank you. Spirit of God, we thank you. We thank you because you have not allowed the enemy to deceive us. 
We thank you because you have not taken away our ability to see and to understand. You have not taken away our ability, the innate ability to be able to judge from good to evil. You have given us that state of mind where we can be balanced and, and, and fair and, and, and justified in our views, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because you keep our mind stayed on you. You keep us functioning from the place of the, of the abundance of your spirit, oh God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We say, let the name of the Lord be praised in our midst. Let the name of the Lord continually be praised in our midst. Let our voices never be deemed to praise you, O God. Let everything, God, that we do and we subject ourselves unto from this day and henceforth, O God, let it come under your authority now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a season of alignment that is coming over this house, that is coming over each and every one, every, every one of us in this space, and those listening right now. Let there be a season of alignment that is taking place, O God, in the name of Jesus. Once again, I welcome you into Eden. Remember the prayer we prayed when we started? It is a place where a man is in oneness with God. I welcome you to that place. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will help you to usher, that, usher yourself through that season. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will keep you stayed in him and within him. I pray that you will not look outside only to see that, you know, you can be, you, you, that, that, that there is a possibility that you can be naked and then you are ashamed. I take away that possibility from your reality right now in the name of Jesus. I surround you with the Spirit of God. Amen. I bless you with the Spirit of God. I bless you with the comfort and, the, and surround you with God in this season. I pray that you would only see things and interpret things through his eyes right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the abundance of your presence. Thank you for the gift of your presence. For in Jesus' name we have declared. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. I, I'm done, but I don't know if anybody has like a comment and, you know, um, because what she said really, really blessed me. You know, when she talked about the the deception and the big you said the word bigger yes so yes exactly so i do an enchantment yes you mentioned enchantment i remember um so i don't know if anybody has anything to add to that and then we can just go talking about hearing god and um, god speaking to you giving you instruction is it out of faith for you to ask god for a sign because you don't want a situation whereby you do what God has asked you to do. And then in the middle of it, you are not sure if what you did was God. So is it right for you to ask God, that God, for a sign? Is it an act of unbelief to ask God for a sign? Absolutely not. It's, it's, it's not far-fetched um, to do that, you know. However, I will ask you, do you hear God? The answer is yes. And you know that it's God. It doesn't. More than half of the time, actually. It doesn't. Look, look through scriptures. The woman who had nothing, Elijah come, comes and says, you know, give me of what you have. And she's looking at him like, auntie, I even have debt. Do you understand? Or is it, is it the children of Israel that were to walk, um, they walk, they walk through the sea? It's one thing for the sea to part open. What's to say it won't close while I'm inside? That's even, it was, do you understand? Like nothing, really. Tells them, oh, you know, the blood of the lamb on your doorpost. Until then, it, like it had no meaning. Do you understand what I'm saying? So many, t or even telling his son to go and die on a wooden cross. Abba. You know, so it doesn't make sense sometimes. But that, that's not to say it can't be him because it doesn't make sense. Am I, am I, do you understand me? Yes, like I said, you can always ask God for a sign. I mean, if you're having conversations with him, it's like me telling you, oh, you said this thing. I can't believe you said this thing. Ah, truly, you, you understand? So that's like a conversation. But I would want to get to the point where, or I would want you to aspire to the point where, as long as you know it is God, you're moving. Does that make sense? So I think the, the, the root matter is, do you know if it is God or not. If you believe that it is God, then by all means. And of course, you can always ask questions. If you have, I mean, again, I would typically, like if I hear something from God and I'm struggling with, you know, how to go about it or even what to make of it, I'll just ask my pastor. And I trust that God will give, you know, her the wisdom to 
you know, break all of that uh, down to me. So there's no, there's no, you can't go wrong when you ask questions. That's the truth. But don't, don't dilly dally, you know, wait, you know, until you feel like the heavens have to open before you. No, nah, there's no need for that. Does that make sense? I, I said that for all matters. But hey, if you need a sign, if you feel like it is a thing for you, then by all means, he speaks to people in signs and symbols. So it's not, it's not far-fetched, that's what I'm saying. You're not out of place to do that. Uh -huh. Anyone else? I was just going to say that maybe in, in line with what you said, if, if that is not one of the ways that God usually speaks to you, you asking him for a sign now is likely to confuse more. It's likely to, you're, like, you're likely to um, go with what is perhaps already in your heart or like a leaning that you already have. And you tend to, because it happens to me, and you tend to begin to see everything as a sign that this is what I should do. So I think Pastor Lita is saying that does he, does he speak to you? Do you know his voice? Yeah, that's the first thing. Because if he's been speaking to you in a certain way, then why doubt it now? That's okay, but this particular one is now not him. Now give me a sign for this one. You are more likely to be confused or deceived by that sign that you've never been used to than the way he has been used to speaking to you. Trust me with signs. Yeah. You're going to err, err on the side of God. That once you believe it's God, move. That if you're going to err, let it be that you did it from a place, a place of belief, and God will turn it around. You know, instead of asking, you see, there's a danger in asking for a sign because in asking for a sign, you may, what what is making you doubt if you know you're hearing the voice of God. So it is because you already have is already a sign in itself. So maybe you have a preconceived idea of what you want the outcome or to be, and then you begin to look at things in that light, which is deception. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining Eden. See you next Monday. God bless you. Tuesday, um, Thursday. I'm so sorry, Thursday. I'm still working with Monday in my head. Thursday, please. Bye.